I'm Bonnie Sue Lewis. I'm professor of mission and world Christianity here at the University of Dubuque Theological Seminary. It's my absolute delight today to be able to inter interview friend and colleague Dr. Christopher James at the University of Dubuque Theological Seminary. Chris, Glad to be here. We are delighted. You are the assistant professor of evangelism and missional Christianity. That's right. That's right. And so um, it's just been a pleasure to be uh, to work alongside you to be a part of um, things together here at Dubuque. So Likewise, and, and thank you for the you know the role that you played in helping bring me onto the team, so I'm glad to be here. Always glad to have another missiologist on board, yeah, so this yeah. is delightful for all of us. Um, you have a family. I sure do. In fact, it's my wife's birthday today. Uh, my wife Lindsay and I have been married 11 plus years, and uh, got a couple of kids, a seven-year-old Virginia, we call her Ginny. She likes to climb everything, and including things that are not meant to be climbed upon. Uh, and she's a good hugger, I know this. She's a good hugger. Yep, she lost a tooth yesterday. Uh, we have a four-year-old son, Luke, um, who's on the big side of a four-year-old's and likes to tackle and, uh, you know, acts like a four-year-old does. And so, yeah, they, they make our lives full. And, uh, yeah, my wife, since uh, she's, she's her birthday, but she's ordained Presbyterian minister, she has served a, a couple of churches as well as as a chaplain out in uh, the Boston area. And right now she's running for the Iowa State House. Uh, Isn't making that a, exciting? Making into the political we sphere. We are so, so excited about that. Thank you, so, yes. We are yes, too. It's, a, yes. it's a new adventure for us. <laughs> well, you are also uh, a Wheaton grad. You are a Fuller grad, as yeah. I am. Mm -hmm. And you are also graduated the, of Boston University yeah. uh, School of Theology. And uh, it's there that you sort of developed an interest in your topic, and um, because you became an author, and that topic is um, church planting in post-Christian soil. That's right. Do you to come out? It comes out. Well, it starts shipping beginning in November. I think uh, the official date is December eighth, when it's reliable that you'll be able to get it. But yeah, it's available for pre-order. Uh, Oxford University Oxford Press. University Press. Yeah, I was really pleased that they uh, were willing to, pr to publish it. And y you know, it's interesting. The I did my doctoral work in Boston, um, but had lived prior to that in the San Francisco area, prior to that in um, Los Angeles and the Seattle areas, um, all major metropolitan mm -hmm. cities, and all in their own way, sort of post-Christian. Uh, so that that interest in what does mission look like in in a place that's no longer sort of Christendom where it's the normal and socially respectable thing to do to go to church like you might still have in some some parts of the country the south for and example that sparked your interest. yeah and it, it made me think you know, that's where we're going as a country as a whole so how how do we do mission in a context like that so. and and that raises some really interesting questions mm -hmm. Because you talk about the nun zone, we right. live in Dubuque, Iowa, surrounded by nuns or no, the other kinds of nuns. But this yeah. is a different yeah, kind yeah, of nun. Yeah, so yeah. tell us, what is the nun so zone? So nun, N-O-N-E. This is basically a social uh, demographic where people, are, if they're taking a survey, they ask them, "Are you a Christian, a Baptist, a, a Buddhist, or whatever, or none of the above?" It's none of the above. So those are the the unaffiliated folks. Uh, and back in 2000, roughly 2000, there was researchers re uh, researching different regions of the country. Um, they did a study uh, on all the different regions, and they ended up calling the Pacific Northwest uh, the nun zone because it had the highest percentage of unaffiliated people living in that country uh, at that, or living in that, that region at that time. Uh, and it, not only that was uh, there more nun nuns living there. Uh, than um, any other part of the country. There's more nuns than any other kind of religious category. So there are more N-O-N-E-S, nuns, than Catholics. Whereas uh, in New England, you know, in, near, mm -hmm. near Boston, um, you would have roughly as many unaffiliated people and Catholics. So there was sort of an equivalence between religious affiliation and unaffiliation, but in the Pacific Northwest, uh, kind of far and away, the the most common religious identity is an unaffiliated one. Well, and and that explains a lot about the fact that you focus primarily on Seattle. Yeah, the study is based uh, strictly within the city limits of Seattle. It gave me, uh, you know, 
enough that one researcher could actually do it <laughs> in a reasonable amount of time, a, few, a couple of years of research, uh, and found 105 churches that had been started since 2001 um, and were up and running by the time that I, f I closed my research window in 2014. Uh, so, I mean, the big, the big sort of immediate takeaway, which I knew was going to be there, was even the nun zone, um, God's at work doing new things. So I wanted to speak sort of in contrast to all the, the decline narratives, yeah. which are statistical narratives. I mean, they, mm -hmm. they're, they're there. There is a decline in affiliation and mm -hmm. church attendance and churches are closing. And there's new things that God's bringing to life. So that's well, uh, tell that, that story. That you know leads to, uh, here's another book on church planting. We've got lots of these. What makes this one <clears> so special? A uh, couple things. Uh, this is nothing against uh, my friends and colleagues in, in the areas of church planting. <laughs> However, uh, I would say a lot of the books written on church planting are pretty pragmatic and strategic and not very theological or um, based on much study of real churches. So, uh, you know, there would be some who would write church planting books that would basically just say, here's how they did it in Acts, here's how we should do it. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a lot we can obviously learn um, from the testimony of Scripture, um, but church planting strategy I don't think is the, the main gift that uh, is given to us in Scripture. Uh, I think, uh, so I, I try to bring a pretty robust theological paradigm using, uh, you know, drawing on the missional uh, conversation over the last 25 or, or more years uh, to say here's what it would look like to be church planting in a way that reflects not a um, colonial mission strategy but a missional strategy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I also you know unlike a lot of church planting resources I didn't just study here's the ten fastest growing churches in the country and I'll tell you all their tricks uh, I studied everything that was happening within a set geography to be able to say look uh, these, this is what the Spirit is doing in a place, a place that a lot of folks would say looks like the future, a lot of folks would say is not fertile soil for the gospel. Uh, so if the Spirit's doing that here, what can we as a whole church learn from him? And I think there's quite a bit to learn. Sweet, yeah. sweet. Well, and you do, you actually speak of four models mm -hmm. that you saw represented by yeah. these many churches, and you tend to favor the neighborhood incarnational model. Yeah. Uh, what is it, and okay. why is this? Yeah, well, it, to get hit. the full answer, you'll have to read the book <laughs> because it's kind of a long one, but the, the four models, they're not, they're not models in the sense that you would often have in a church planting book, which would be like, here's four strategies. Mm -hmm. um, they're actually sort of theological mm -hmm. or ecclesiological mm -hmm. models describing uh, what's happening in the dynamics between the eight churches identity, its spirituality, and its approach to mission. So the, the neighborhood incarnation model, uh, instead of being primarily about uh, the theological distinctives of a tradition, whether that be Reformed, whether that be sort of non-denominational, whether it be Pentecostal, whether it be uh, progressive mainline, uh, the neighborhood incarnation model, actually the, the heart of it is about saying we are committed to a place and not, not a city, which is bigger than um, anybody can really know in any depth, but sure. sort of a livable place, uh, a neighborhood, a parish, mm -hmm. uh, as some people have written about it. So these churches actually have different kinds of theological sensibilities. There are some that are progressive mainline churches, some that are fairly conservative evangelical churches, some that are uh, Pentecostal in their th uh, theological or spiritual tradition, but the sort of um, cornerstone of their identity and practice is we are committed to this neighborhood and the question we're asking is not how do we effectively plant a church, but how do we be the people of God in this neighborhood? Mm -hmm. Which is really a, a quite different mm -hmm. question, um, as, as, as you would know. Uh, the, the big shift in the missional conversation is, a, is shifting from a conversation of, that's ecclesiocentric about how do we be or do church effectively to a question that is theologically uh, mm -hmm. or th centered on theology, mm -hmm. what's God up to, and how um, yes. how do we be God's people here and now? So that's that's really, you know, the reason I say it's the best is not because I'm saying this is the way you can grow the fastest, um, but I'm saying this is the most in line with the, the new insights that have really come to us out of the missional conversation, drawing on 200 plus years of mission, overseas mission work right. and other kinds of work. So. so what are your hopes for the church? 
Uh, my hope for the church is that, well, we're in the midst, you know, a big part of it is that the church would have hope mm -hmm. and that that hope would not be based on um, re-achieving some sort of ascendancy in our culture. I think that's sort of a false uh, hope. Um, a lot of our energies right now in, in many denominations are directed toward sort of um, uh, patching the dam, right? And trying to stop the bleeding and yes. resave the institution. But my hope would be that our hope would be in God. <laughs> I mean, Amen. In, in, Amen. you know, uh, empires, denominations, churches wax and wane. Um, but God's kingdom stands forever. And uh, we as God's people are invited to be part of what God's doing in the midst of declining denominations and all kinds of other social changes. So uh, just very simply that we would turn our attention from looking at, oh no, the numbers are doing this, and turn our attention to God. Ah, God is bubbling and giving birth and, um, and sprouting new life uh, in our midst, and that that would be the focus of our attention and we'd find. And that is the source of our hope. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Well, what about your hopes for the book? Uh, well, it, ha it has several audiences in mind. There's certainly a hope that, that church planters and leaders in church planting movements will, will read it and learn from it. Um, it also addresses theologians. Um, you know, I I'm a practical theologian. Mm -hmm. uh, I want theologians, uh, there's, there's a chapter that actually uh, proposes a handful of trajectories, I call them, doctrinal trajectories that, mm -hmm. that say, look, if this is what's going on with the church, the real life, everyday church, what does that mean about the nature of the church? How, you know, the, there ought to be, I believe, uh, some sort of um, coherence between what we see in actual churches and what we're saying about the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, not just, okay, this is what the tradition has said about church, and that seems like totally incongruent with everybody's experience of church. So that would be, you know, for theologians, I hope they'll take seriously uh, the concrete reality of, of church, churches, and particularly church plants, in their doctrinal or ecclesiological work. And then finally, you know, there's also stuff in there for sociologists who are just, uh, you know, sociologists these days are, are, tend to be mostly paying attention to the decline narrative. And I want to say, hey, there's some other things to pay, pay attention to um, in our transition, transitional period. So hopefully, you know, there's not a whole lot of sociological data out there on new churches because yes. they're hard to find yes. uh, and a lot of the sociologists are better connected to institutions than um, innovators. So Well, and I'm just delighted because having spent seven years in Seattle, mm -hmm. uh, that's my territory and you're yeah. absolutely right. God is at work there. There are things absolutely. going on there and it's mm -hmm. a, a fascinating place to study. Yeah. You uh, have another project in mind, I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, at the front end of some research that's in some ways uh, similar or a follow-up to this, um, and I'm doing research in Dane County uh, surrounding Madison, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm doing a lot of the similar research, uh, trying to identify all the church plants, but uh, this time what I'm doing differently is actually trying to uh, look at not just the church plants, but all the churches, so that I can situate or describe what's going on with church plants within a larger environment of here's what's happening in uh, the people of God, God's church. Uh, so, and that will span not, not just urban settings, but also suburban and rural settings. So uh, I'm trying, you know, really all of my work, uh, all of my teaching is about trying to help the church and its leaders um, faithfully witness to the gospel in the midst of our context. And, and when I say our, I, I'm thinking primarily the North American U.S. context, and right now, um, as has been highlighted by you know political events and, and other things, there's a huge tension between rural uh, and urban settings, and uh, God's at work in both and in between. And I, I think there's an uh, that's so that's why I'm in Dane County. I'm looking at the whole picture of uh, an urban center and its surrounding suburban and rural environments. Sweet. Yeah. Well, I'm it's looking forward to seeing what you come up with. And Thanks. Yeah, that'll, it'll be a while. I'm just getting started <laughs> on that one. But Well, we are delighted you're here and working on this. And uh, so, Chris, God bless you. And, thank you. And uh, thank you for the work that you are doing for God and for God's church. And likewise, glad to be here. And if anybody wants to check out the book, it is available for pre-order on, on Amazon, also uh, on the Oxford University Press website. So feel free to pre-order. Absolutely. And thank you. Thank you.